Hello educators, Flora McCormick here for a second day with you to talk about tools from Sustainable Parenting. I'm the founder and creator of Sustainable Parenting. After 10 years as a licensed clinical professional counselor um, and parenting coach, I have moved into community coaching where I support parents who want to move from overwhelm and exhaustion to a place where they feel calm confidence knowing that they are having tools that will truly raise their kids to be respectful, responsible, and fun to be around, and doing so in a way that has boundaries that are kind and firm and allow you space to be able to flourish and feel more energy and passion again for the other things in your life beyond parenting. So I'm so glad to be here with you today. If you are live, please say hello. And even if you're watching this in a replay, let me know where you're watching from and what age your kids are. Today, I promise to share with you a tip about how to get your kids to listen in 10 seconds or less. And these, I'm gonna give you actually two tips and tools that are super duper useful for kids that are of any age, really. Hi there, good to see you, Anna. And, um, and the basic gist is that there are definitely ways that we can get our kids more motivated to listen to us. And there are things that we do that really kind of push the, their buttons to be less responsive to kind of you know it doesn't it doesn't surprise us that they might be ignoring us so and i'm going to ask you to interact with me a little bit here so that i can have some um, back and forth with you so here's what i want you to think about i want you to hear these phrases and think about what you are thinking feeling or deciding if you were standing in the shoes of a child. Go brush your teeth. Stop whining. Get your coat out of the hallway. Get your PJs on now. So what do you notice, Anna, that you're thinking, feeling, or deciding? While Anna's typing in her answers, I'll share that when I do this in person or in my community coaching, I get answers like, I feel like you don't care. I feel like I just want to tune you out. I feel like I want to scream back, no, um, or ask why. Um, Anna says she feels unheard. Yeah, and a lot of people will have different reactions, just like our kids have different reactions. Upset, says Anna. And some people might just go with it. And there are kids when we just say, like, do this, do this, that kind of roll with it. They say there's about, you know, 30% of kids out there that are kind of pretty easygoing. And that it's a very normal and natural that there are a number of children out there, at least 30% that are going to be more prone to anger and push back and want control and be like, yeah, right, let me show you. And another third that are going to be prone to very sad and disconnected and just kind of more challenge that direction. Hi, Megan. Megan, good to see you. So... We're talking about ways to inspire our kids to listen in 10 seconds or less. And the bottom line is we do spend a lot of our time pushing our kids buttons of no or ignoring us when we are just telling them what to do all day. When it is a constant like, go brush your teeth, stop doing this, start doing this, stop doing that. <laughs> you know, they say some kids, it feels like about 90% of their day is some form of no or do from adults. Here's what you can do, here's what you can't do, here's what you can do, here's what you can't do, here's what you can do. And imagine what that would feel like if that's how your day was. I would probably be very motivated to want to scream or start ignoring because that's just like overwhelming. And um, Anna says you can give two choices. Yeah, that's one option for sure. That's a great suggestion. And I'll give you a couple additional ones too. So what I find is that it can be, you know, if we're really honest with ourselves, sometimes we feel like we wish that our kids could be like the golden retriever. 
Like we feel like we wish that they would just kind of be fun to throw the ball and do the play stuff with. And then we feel like if we say like, come, that they would just come. <laughs> and that when we say lay down, they would just lay down. <laughs> and yes, that would make our lives like simpler but that is not what it's about to raise a human, to raise an individual who is going to be powerful in this world, who is gonna do amazing things, who we want to be respectful, responsible, fun to be around, creative, inventive, problem solving, um, you know, bold, authentic, like there's so many characteristics that we really care about. If it was so simple as just obedience, then sure, we could just find ways to kind of bully our kids into being like the golden retriever. But that's not our main goal here. That's certainly not my main goal or the goal of the people who want to work with me. So instead, I want to offer you this. Let's hear these couple other ways of hearing those same situations and you notice what I want you to do is tell me what you're thinking, feeling, or deciding if you were standing in the shoes of a child hearing these phrases. What do you need to do so your teeth won't feel scuzzy? How can you say that so I can hear you? Where does your coat belong? What's next in our bedtime routine chart? So let me know, those of you that are watching, I know we've got Megan and Anna and someone else, let, let me know who's here. What do you notice yourself thinking, feeling, or deciding when I've asked you those questions? Hmm. Anna says, makes me stop and think. Yeah, before, were you prone to stop and think or your gut reaction was to yell or to ignore or to fight? Instead, you were, you felt like inspired to stop and think. Yeah. When we think about the big mission again of like the overall qualities we want to grow in our child's Stop and think is something I want. I want their brains to be building the muscles to think about what do I need to have on when I go outside? How can I say this in a way that's gonna be received well by someone else? So the question is building their brain muscles to have to do the thinking instead of me doing all the work of telling them. Megan says, well, it depends. With where does, it, does your you cost belong? What, where does your coat belong? I'm trying to give give them to be get them to be dependent independent yeah exactly so um i want you to keep standing in the shoes of your child though megan what do you think they feel when you say where does your coat belong because it is building that independence when you, you it's 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 shifting the moment you want to nag into a moment of asking Asking instead of telling is what this tool is. And it comes from Positive Discipline, Jane Nelson and Lynn Lott. And it's a super effective tool to build independence. Exactly. Because when we don't solve the problem and we say, where does this go? That's a super simplified version. Other times it can be, how can you solve this with your brother? Or how can you solve that with your classmate? What are your ideas about how you could make that better when they come to you to say, he took this from me and that, and you know, builds independence to say, yeah, I hear that, wow. What would you like to do about that? In such a different instinct, when we know that our role is wanting to grow these qualities, we can end up wanting to be a teacher that is like gonna have the right words to tell them how to do it. And so much more powerful to ask them to think about how to do it. And this obviously in, in, in implies that we've done some teaching outside of those moments. So when I say the question, what's next on your bedtime routine chart, that obviously implies that we've done a little bit of planning together. We've made a bedtime routine chart. And routines are your number one thing that is gonna save you so much grief in parenting and working with kids. Because when a child, number one, has been involved in making the routine, Number two is clear on what's expected in that routine. And number three might have some like positive outcomes that come from doing that routine versus 
sad outcomes that come if we they do not do that routine, then they are gonna be motivated to do the thing. When I talk to so many people that are struggling with bedtimes, getting out the door, um, uh, dinner time, um, and sibling rivalry, and in all of those areas I say, so what's your plan? What have you guys agreed on is like the, what needs to get done, and if it doesn't get done, what happens? What's the order that's generally what you've agreed to? And people often are like, oh, I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> so we can just have these assumptions that our kids like know how to function appropriately at dinner. They know how to function in the grocery store or in getting out the door. And yet we've never taken the time to just teach, taken the time to stop and say, yeah, exactly. Megan says it's all the transition times, totally. So if we don't pause and find ways to teach them how to do that thing like you know so let's talk about dinner let's have a dinner plan that we are going to sit down and maybe with super young kids we're gonna have a little timer that shows that we are gonna sit at the table for at least five minutes together maybe for older kids it's that we're at least going to sit here until everyone else is done even if you finish your food we sit and visit whatever your expectations are. And then in our family, it's that, you know, there's no other food after dinner until the next day, except we do have a little fruit snack with our story time with bed. And that also is dependent on having dinner done. So it's like, if you're not hungry and you don't really love what I'm serving right now, that's okay, but this is all that there is. And if you choose not to eat it, then you don't get your fruit snack. So having a clear expectation, then we can do the asking. Then when they are horsing around at dinner, or they're kind of not eating, I can ask, remember you guys, what needs to happen for you to have your fruit snack at story time? And just those questions turn their brain on. I, I have been in these times with my kids where I've been repeating like 15 times a night, it feels like. Eat your dinner, stop touching your sister, take another bite over and over and it's like I'm losing my mind with frustration and they're not listening, it's not helping. I'm expending so much energy. And then I'll remember this tool and I just say, guys, what should you be doing right now? And it's like, they know. It's just that their brains are going here and here and when I'm just saying it, I'm doing all the thinking so I didn't engage their brains when I ask then just like Anna said earlier, it makes you stop and think. So this is a super useful tool to get your kids to listen in 10 seconds or less. Now I know Megan let me know in a message that her child does some screaming. And so I wanna give you two tools for that. And this is another part of having our kids listen in 10 seconds or less. If you are tired of like getting in these explosions and then you have other responses that are like explosive too and then they explode higher, you explode higher, this is a way to de-escalate that. So it's a two-part thing. It involves the asking and it's saying, I notice, and then a curiosity question. So if a child like is trying to do a toy thing and they're just like, ah, and they push it away, in like a really harsh way you don't want, then you could say, whoa, I notice you're getting frustrated with that toy. And then curiosity question, I wonder what we could do to solve this. So just two parts, or they scream at you now when you say it's time to get shoes on. You could go, whoa, I notice you're not liking that it's time to stop playing and go. What would you like to choose as your last thing to play right now? Or what would you like to do as your last thing with your truck? So it's an I notice, which is a form of validating, just naming where they're at, what you see them feeling and expressing, and then solution focused. What can we do? what and how. They're not why questions, they're what and how. What can we do to solve this? How can we make it better? What can you do to improve this? 
all of those. I'm seeing some more of your um, conversations here. Good back and forth and sharing some ideas with one another. Um, Anna says, my daughter was like that growing up. Difficult not to engage with the behavior. Yeah. So another piece to add to this is something that we have been talking about in my coaching program. And the, the ladies have named it, Woe, Low, and Slow. <laughs> So I want to teach you, uh, Maggie, Megan, especially when we're talking about these moments where our kids are explosive. This is great with teenagers too, Anna. Whoa, low, and slow. Here's what it looks like. When our kids just kind of blow up or snap at us with some back talk or something that just really feels like, you know, you have that gut reaction of like, whoa, Instead of going into them with like a, how dare you? You will not treat me like that. You will not say that, excuse me, which usually just explodes it more. Um, to hold an attitude that like, you know, whoa, that is not my child. That is not my child being their wise, wonderful self that I know them to be. So I'm gonna just respond. They've gone high, I'm gonna go low. Because we know that our heart rate, our level of activation of our nervous system can bring down someone who has gone to that kind of out of control place. So it looks like this. If a child were to say, I'm not going to do it and you can't make me. I go, whoa, and pause for like five seconds. Take a breath, hold on, one, two, three. You sound really frustrated. And then just pause for 10 seconds. It's okay to be angry. We don't talk that way in our family. How can we solve this? Whoa, low, and slow. So here I'm on a video with you, I can't quite show, but that might mean low, meaning getting down on their level, sitting down in a chair, pausing, and being slow in my voice tone, low in my volume, really pausing. So I'd love to hear, what do you notice? What would that feel like if you were standing in the shoes of a child hearing that in a moment where you were snapping? What would that be? Whoa low and slow. How did that feel? <sighs> and I don't know if you can hear my kids in the background giggling with my husband. He's, they're squealing with laughter. <laughs> All right. So something to try. So these are some tools and I find that that gets my child to listen way better then snapping back at them saying how dare you go to your room and then it's a whole power struggle for like 20 minutes teenagers that are slamming doors you don't understand me you just don't get it all that kind of stuff <laughs> hannah says love to hear your kiddos so that this is truly another tool to get your kids to listen in 10 seconds or less it can feel like forever but to pause and do that whoa, low and slow if they're really emotionally reactive. And it's teaching them how to help manage their emotions by slowing down also. You're modeling how when you feel a spark of ugh, you can pull back and slow down and pause. So great to be with you and be able to share with you some tools from sustainable parenting. 
My methods are really entirely focused on how to parent smarter, not harder. As you can tell, these tools that I've given you do not take a ton of extra time. In fact, they usually save time. And that's what I wanna help parents do. I know that there is so much going on in the world and I don't want you to get to the point where you think it's just too hard to help them manage emotions better so you just throw your hands up and like whatever, just I can't deal with this. There truly are super effective ways to connect with your kids and to encourage them in how to be respectful, responsible, and fun to be around. Ways that can also give you more energy so that you can pursue the passions that you're interested in outside of parenting and that you can end the day knowing, truly knowing that you ha are using the tools to raise a child to be respectful, responsible, and fun to be around. So I'll drop my link below if you would like to know more about sustainable parenting. It's so great to have been able to share a bit with you today. And I would love to hear back from you if you try these tools and what you notice.